What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Kind of Punch Boxing News, and I'm coming to you with some more boxing. Um, you know, I want to talk about <clears throat> an ongoing topic, but I want to come more from another perspective. Um, Shelly Finkel, of course, we all know that he will not sit down and have a conversation with any Hearn whatsoever to make a fight with Anthony Josh. We know that. That's the world block because then he turns around and says, well, because they don't want to fight because they're not coming up with a legitimate offer. That's what it is, so we're not going to waste our time. You know, and this is for the this is the second time this has happened, okay? Mind you. Um if I'm Deontay Wilder, I have to be I have to honestly question People at my best interest. You know, I mean, they've already, fact, fact, they've already kept this guy from some of the best fights that he possibly could have been in. And, you know, they've held him back, you know, almost like a school kid that wasn't allowed to progress to the next grade. You know what I mean? That he, they're afraid of failure, that they were afraid of him losing or whatever, you know, and it's bad because... It's like they held on to this guy and they held on to this guy and they, you know, they protected him and they, you know, they sheltered this guy so long to the fact now that they let him out. Now he's like, hey, I want to take on everyone and anyone or whatever. But then it's like, but then your management is still doing the same thing. People don't understand what Deontay Wilder's management is still doing. You know, the, it, we already know the balance between him and AJ. AJ did a things a lot faster. They threw him in, you sink or you swim. Let's see what you got. You know, it kind of reminds me of Conan the Barbarian when he grew up as a slave child, pushing the thing around, and he got bigger and buff. And, you know, since they knew he was physically strong, they just threw him in there and see what he could do. That's how they did Anthony Joshua. He's like, he's like the British Conan. The, the British black Conan. That's what he is. And they were like, okay, kid, let's see what you got. You know what I mean? On his 13th fight, boom, you in there with a 12-rounder now. You know what I mean? Five fights later, boom, you in there with Klitschko, the king for 10 years, the reigning champ, okay? You know, yeah, the he lost to uh, Fury in a, in a fight. He did, okay? So, but coming from 13th fight to 18th fight you're already fighting one of the best heavyweights in the last 10 years fact that's a great accomplishment you know what i'm saying so and then what do you think klitschko was doing sitting on his arse he wasn't sitting on his ass he wasn't he was boxing he was doing something every day that guy he's addicted to physical things He's one of those outdoors guys. When he stops, you're going to always see him on, on, a, on a paddle, paddling himself across, you know, a lake or something. You know, he's always doing something that's going to call, that's going to be physical. You know, he's just a physical guy, you know, and then he learned a lot in there and he still and he still is le progressing to learn more and more and more. OK, that's Anthony Joshua. Deontay Wilder, they held him back and they were like, no, you don't need to clinch. Go fight. Same guy, mind you. Same guy. We got to talk about this because this, this, I'm going somewhere with this. The same guy that AJ fought. We know that. That's why both of these guys' path has done this. You know what I'm saying? Now, it looks like they were coming back together to make a showdown. And what happened? You know, and you people can blame Deontay Wilder. And I, I don't, I, now I'm, I'm looking at it because people used to blame Hearn and not AJ, right? But you, you look at it, it's not that anymore. Both of those, you, you AJ said after he got past his late, latest test, Pavectin, right? Hey, I want that fight. I don't want to see here no no twos or threes. I want the Wilder fight. That, that's what he said out of his own mouth. There's no more mandatories, right? Let's get this fight started. Why, why not? We have to fight. It makes sense now. You know what I mean? That doesn't sound like, or coming from a perspective, that doesn't sound like somebody that's wanting to duck a fight. First of all, you know, but I don't even think it's that, you know, I think we've weeded out what's really going on. But what the deal is, sure, they got different personalities. Yeah. You know, one's a thug. The other one's a businessman. One decided 
Hey, I'm going to play the villain like Mayweather. You put on like a Mayweather, a Money Mayweather-like role. Where the other guy was more cool and casual. That's a gent. You know what I mean? The thug and the businessman. Okay, yeah, yeah. They have different personalities. So what? You know what I mean? The, but the whole thing is it comes down to the negotiations. And that's where we weeded it to. Now, you're saying, Shirley Finkel, well, we won't do anything and we won't sit down until we get a legitimate offer. You know what I'm saying? That don't sound like somebody that wants to make a fight. You know what I mean? It sounds like to me they're still doing the same shit they were doing the last three or four years. You know what I'm saying? It, it, that's what it seems like to me. So to me, it seems like the reluctancy of Shelly Finkel even trying to get a sit down to see what's, you know, something that can progress into a possible negotiation. You're not even trying to negotiate. So how can you have your best fighter's interest at heart? And you're not trying to negotiate whatsoever. You're not even trying to sit down. When I heard it the first time, I was like, okay, that that sounded fishy to me. When I first time I heard it, now I'm hearing it like, okay, now you're still saying the same thing. You know what I mean? But then you, you're really not trying to let everyone know. I think what it is, they don't think, I don't think they believe in their fighter. I think they're trying to hold him. That's why they give him less money because they he never really had to take big risks anyway. He didn't have to fight the Klitschko's. He had to fight with Povetkin, and then that kind of weeded out because of the drug thing. And you know what I mean? That fight could have that X still could have happened. But it, what what happened with that fight? It got messy, and it got messy, and they went to court, and then nobody ended up fighting. You know what I'm saying? That's just too convenient now. Now it's just too convenient. Like Shelly Finkel, like, no, uh, well, we don't want, there's no rush to get our boy in there. There's no rush to, to, to get Deontay. Even though he's a WBC champion, there's still no rush to get him out there. You see what I'm saying? But then now everyone's, you know, shitting on AJ saying, hey, um, AJ's ducking the fight, but you haven't signed the contract. And Finkel was the main one saying, we've sent many emails. Where's the proof at? Send us proof that you sent emails to Eddie Hearn. I've said this again and again, but now it's making more sense. The weed, in, the what's been weeded out is it's Shelly Finkel. Al Heyman is like a solid partner, so you know you rarely hear anything from him. You know, but then honestly, you know he knew where Deontay was too. You know what I mean? Because if the fifty million dollars was real, mind you, and he had the fifty million dollars, or he was behind that fifty million dollar thing. You know what I mean? The question would be answered, like, why wasn't Deontay granted that much money? Because he took no risk. So they knew where Deontay was. So they were all in sync. Well, this is a guy that we're slowly progressing. You know what I mean? Either we're going to wait for somebody to lose so we can fight someone um, less skillful, less of a risk. What do you think Stavern was? Stavern was a low-risk fight. The only person Stavern beat that was worth significance was Chris Ariola and Deontay Wilder already beat Chris Ariola. You know what I mean? Yeah, he Chris Ariola got his nose busted or whatnot, you know, but that was the only claim to fame that Stavern fought. And Stavern fought uh Deontay for that fight. It went twelve rounds, but Deontay won a decision. Okay. You know, and besides and besides Luis King Kong Ortiz which was his bread and butter, his claim to fame, okay? Because that's the only person he's legitimately fought, okay? So, yeah, it's Finkel. I think it's Finkel's intention on to waiting things out. But what happens, this is what's going to happen in this scenario. One, Anthony Joshua learns more and more each fight because he's only been, this is his 22nd fight, right? He's going to learn more and more, especially with professional boxing because he's all these guys were amateurs, right? But... He's learning more and more, you know, so if they keep waiting and they keep waiting, you know, for Deontay, I don't know what they're waiting. I guess until he they feel that it's time to cash out on our boy. Let's see if he can sink or swim like they did Joshua for many, many fights ago. If they do that and they come up short, they can't, you know, they, they you know, they don't have to worry about saving face. You see what I'm saying? But right now, but what will happen? I don't think that Deontay, though. We'll learn, you know what I mean? In that many fights, you know what I'm saying? If you're still learning, which he has an unorthodox style anyway, I don't think he's going to learn much. So either he's they're going to wait till 2020, 20, 
to fight. And then by that time, Anthony Joshua has enough experience to easily dismantle Deontay Wilder. Then they'll blame it on oh, his age because he'll probably be 33, 34 years old by that time. Because I know Deontay's 32 now, right? I don't know when his birthday is. So if he's turning 33 this year and he turns uh, 34 next year, well, by the time they fight, he might be 34 years of age. So, that you know, they'll run back to that. They'll resort to that, you know. But, you know, but still, 34 is not significantly old. But coming from a guy that has that many kinks in his armor, you know, unorthodox as he is, you know, either that could happen or someone that comes out of nowhere that you won't even expect to knock him out, knocks him out. And I think that's what Eddie Hearn is doing. He's waiting for Deontay to get beat or get knocked out, you know, with all those flaws. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's easy. It's destined to happen. You know, that's why I know that Shelly Finkel does not have the best intentions for Deontay Wilder. I, I don't think I, I can't. You know what I'm saying? It, it just it doesn't make sense. And what's the sad thing about it? The sad thing about it. He's praising them like they're gods. That's the sad thing. You know what I mean? And it would be another sad thing is if he was really thinking A.J. and Hearns is really doing him wrong. For that less of money that he was getting versus what he feels he should get. And letting his letting his team lie to him and tell him, hey, we need to get more money for fighting this guy. If they believe that he can knock that guy out, they would have already booked that fight, man. That's it in a nutshell. Anyway, you guys tell me what you think about this theory. Please subscribe and you guys been counterpunched. Peace.